What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I know Raspberry Pis are difficult to find these days, but I am starting to see more stock appear in various regions. Andre Costa created a terrific tool. He designed a site that tracks most of the official Raspberry Pi distributor stock, which can be found in the description below. Anyway, I thought we'd have a look at some lightweight Linux distributions that you can run on your Raspberry Pi. And if you have another type of single board computer that supports Linux, you can try it on those as well. I won't go into detail about the installation and configuration of the distros I'm demonstrating, but we will be poking around a bit from first boot to see how much tweaking I will have to perform after it is installed, if at all. If this is something you're into, let's go. All right, this is the first time I'm going to do a video of this type of content where it is a review. So I would love to hear uh, from you in the comments below as to whether or not you would like to see different improvements and just let me know what you think of this style of video. Uh, hopefully over time I can improve this type of video for you. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Okay, so you will need a few items if you want to follow along. The Raspberry Pi board I'll be using to demonstrate the various distros is a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 GB. But you will also need a micro SD card, a micro SD card writer, a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, and a case if you just want to clean things up. So here we go. These distros you may or may not have heard of and will not be in any specific order, as I do enjoy Arch Linux for ARM. And as you can see, it's not going to be the first one I start with. The first one I'm going to start with is Pop OS. So as a proponent of open source, I can highly recommend System76. Not only do they make open source hardware built specific to Linux, but they also develop software and firmware. Pop OS is an example of the software they develop. And they even customized Pop OS for the Raspberry Pi 4 dubbed Pop Pi to provide you the same strong software capabilities as Pop OS. So whether you're building a robot or learning Rust, you can unleash the power of open source software while having fun playing and experimenting. And just as a side note, Pop OS is based on Ubuntu and it features a customized GNOME desktop environment known as Cosmic. And it's actually a very, very nice OS. And you can always skip this wizard. Uh, any of these settings are available in the settings manager. So this one is talking about the dock here at the bottom. So right now it's, you can see it extends to the edges of the screen, but I actually like the dock, but not extended to the edges. So that's what I'll choose. And now the show workspaces button and show applications button is up here. But on the dock, we also have our workspaces and show applications. So I just to keep it clean, I'm going to remove those from the top corner here. And as far as the date time, I really like this ability to move it over to the right or left if you want, or leaving it in the center. But I like it up here. So that's where I'll put it and then just hit next. And this just tells us how we can open or switch applications from the launcher. Uh, and that's with the super key. And if you're not familiar with that, the super key is on a Windows keyboard, just the Windows key. So when you press it, up pops the launcher. And if we type terminal, we can see that we can either hit enter because it's highlighted and it'll launch that, or if there was a text editor that we wanted to launch, we can just hit control and the number four, just hit next. And if you have a touchpad, it does accept gestures. I'm going to leave the theme on dark. You can change it to light if you like, and we're done. All right, so. Yeah, it's not too bad for a Raspberry Pi. Okay, we're using version 95. You can always change your browser to anything that you want. If you don't like Firefox, this just happens to be what's the default. And unlike Ubuntu, we'll just jump into the terminal here. We can see we can see that Snap is not installed so it is not using snaps 
I'm not really a fan of snaps just because of all of the loop devices that get installed with snaps, but Pop! OS is not using them. And it's using kernel 5.13 built for the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I really like this version, customized version of GNOME in Pop! OS here. So up next here we have Arch Linux for ARM, which is obviously an Arch Linux version for ARM processors. Its design philosophy is to provide specific kernel and software support for hard float ARM v7 with Neon and ARM v8 ARCH64 instruction sets on a wide variety of architectures. The Arch Linux philosophy offers the finest platform for users by providing them complete control and responsibility over their system. The entire distribution is on a rolling release cycle, which allows for daily updates via small packages rather than large upgrades on a set release schedule. Okay, so while Arch is loading in the background, there is one thing um, that we have to do, and that's to initialize it. So I am just going to SSH um, over to it. And the logon is, I will use the default, which is just alarm. Yes, and again, it's just the same. Okay, so we're going to have to initialize. So that is going to be with this uh, Pac-Man key. Oh, it needs to be run as root. Okay. Uh, Okay, so we will SSH as root. And the password is root, just the same as the other one. But it's just not accepting it. Okay, so I couldn't log in for root for whatever reason, so I'm just going to try to sudo uh, the pacman key command. All right, so sudo is not found, so I just logged in with su, and now I'm at root. So now if we type pacman key in it, it will generate those keys. And then the next command that we will do is to populate Arch Linux ARM once this uh, completes its key. All right, so the next command is going to be Populate space Arch Linux ARM. And there we go. So now we can exit out and exit out, close the connection. Okay, well, let's go see what happens when we reboot. So now I'm just going to install a desktop. Welcome to Arch on ARM. So let's just uh, log in here. Now this uh, Arch is a little bit of a more advanced operating system to get installed. This is as basic as basic can get. And from here we can start customizing uh, everything on top. So 
I'm just going to make a couple configuration changes and I will come right back. All right, welcome back to the desktop. So this is Arch Linux ARM edition. So I did make a few changes. Um, like I said, this is fairly advanced. You do have to install everything that you are going to need, like Bluetooth, your sound, network manager, the desktop itself, your browser, everything. I changed the icon up here just to give it that Raspberry Pi look. And I installed Firefox. So let's just jump into the terminal. And we'll do a uname dash A. And we can see that we're running the Linux uh, 5.15 Raspberry Pi Arch kernel. And I'd have to say Pop OS, I really enjoy. It's really easy to install, but the Arch Linux here is probably one of my favorite uh, Linux distributions. All right, so let's have a look at another OS. Welcome to MX Linux, which is a lightweight Linux operating system based on Debian's stable branch that was created in calibration with the Anti-X and MX Linux groups. It's a family of operating systems that uses XFSE as the default desktop with alternative KDE Plasma and Fluxbox editions being available and is aimed to combine a stylish and efficient desktop with high stability and strong performance. MX Linux graphical tools make Make a wide range of operations simple while the live USB and snapshot capabilities inherited from Anti-X offer impressive portability and considerable assistance is available via videos, documentation and a helpful form. I do like how they've kind of mashed together Raspbian uh, in with MX Linux. So the Raspberry Pi config tool here is available to you like you'd expect to see in Raspberry Pi OS. For a Raspberry Pi 4 gig, it seems to handle everything not too bad. It's fairly snappy. And let's see what version of Chromium is the default. So it is version 90, as we can see here. And it does install a few other applications, which we'll just kind of briefly look at. It installs Genie by default. Not much in the way of graphics. And LibreOffice. Other than that, it is a pretty lightweight install. But all in all, fairly decent. System tray down here, like you'd expect, like normal Windows. Some shortcuts to some applications. Conky is a little bit hard to see here in the corner, uh, but that could just be due to the color scheme of it and also the background image that is selected to log out or power it off is over here in this corner. So you can put it into suspend, restart, or power off. So we will just power off and move on to our next OS. All right, so here we have Manjaro ARM Linux version. And Manjaro is a free and open source Linux system based on Arch Linux with a focus on accessibility and user friendliness. Pac-Man is the package manager and it uses a rolling release model. It works on desktops, laptops, tablets, Raspberry Pis, and even mobile phones. Different user interfaces are available, and it is highly efficient, fast, and most hardware works right out of the box. You only need to install a device driver on rare occasions. Manjaro 64-bit with the XFCE desktop boots in a matter of seconds and requires only about 200 megabytes of memory to run. Oh, it starts us off with a welcome wizard. I'll just go quickly through it. And we're going to reboot. And we're back. We'll just log in. We'll have a little look around. Installing this was quite simple. It can be installed right from the Raspberry Pi imager. And as you saw, it goes directly into the startup wizard, and this has very much a Windows type feel. Taskbar down here, our workspaces, some icons, shortcuts. Firefox seems to be the browser of choice with a lot of these Linux distributions. 
let's just have a look at what version this one is running. Here we're running version 99. I believe that is the latest. Open fairly quick. And what else do we get installed? Calculator. Yeah, very much a Windows look and feel. So no office applications, which is fine. We can install those if we wanted. Let's just jump into the terminal here. I'm running the 5.15 kernel, Manjaro ARM, Raspberry Pi. And I've always liked Arch because of the AUR repository or Arch uh, user repository. It's a nice simple way to install software. We can just search for any kind of a package name. Discord, just real quick. And we'll see. We have HTOP installed right off the bat, which is nice to see. Idle, it's not using a lot of CPU, using almost a gig of memory. So let's just search for Discord here. As we can see, there's no Discord in the software, but in the AUR, there is. And actually, installing yay because it just makes it a lot easier to install packages from the AUR. So as you'll see, the base package here, we just have to copy this. And now we can install that package with yay. It doesn't need sudo yay s and install Enter. Just going to use the defaults. Q to quit. Yes, I want to install. And it's saying that it's not compatible with the Raspberry Pi. So, no, I don't want to try to build. But that's how easy it is to grab packages out of the 
AUR. Which is a nice thing about Arch Linux. Okay, let's move on to the next OS. All right, so here we have Kali Linux, which is based on Debian and is intended for digital forensics and penetration testing. You can install penetration testing tools on any Linux distribution, but Kali is built to minimize the amount of work required. So you can just sit down and start. It's simple to construct an optimal version of Kali for your individual needs using meta packages and its documentation provides all the information you'll need to know about Kali Linux, including tips and recipes, whether you're a seasoned veteran or a rookie. So we'll just let this finish booting up, and I will see you on the desktop. All right, so it looks like we have Firefox as our default web browser. Let's just have a quick peek and see what version comes on it. Uh, it looks like we've got version 91.5. And let's see what kind of software comes installed. There is a lot of software for penetration testing and everything you can need. And what do we get for base applications? What about graphics? And we also have Chromium. Okay, let's just jump into the terminal here real quick. So we can see that we are running 5.4 kernel based on Debian. Yeah, overall, I like the look. I'm not in any way, shape, or form a penetration tester, so I have no idea what most of these tools are. Some of them, though, I have seen, like NMAP. Let's see, is HTOP installed? Nope, but it's asking if we want to install it. Let's see what happens. No, it's going to ask us. I thought it might just pick it up based on what came up there. Do we not have network? Connect. I'm really curious if this is going to auto install it based on just running a command and it doesn't find it. That'd be really neat. 
Yes. All right, let's just move on to the next piece of software. Fedora Linux was created by the Fedora Project, which is a Red Hat community project, and Red Hat is a business-oriented Linux distribution. Fedora serves as a proving ground for new features before they are included in Red Hat Enterprise Linux. A new version of Fedora is published every six months, with each release having a 13-month support period, this means that you'll need to upgrade in the next 6 to 13 months. The workstation version, which I'm presenting here, is a polished, user-friendly operating system for laptop and desktop computers that includes a comprehensive collection of tools for developers and creators of all kinds. For some reason, I did lose my audio here, so I'm just going to voice over as best I can. So the first thing that we are presented with, again, with most of these distributions is a startup wizard. And I'm just going through and connecting up my Wi-Fi. And now that that's connected, we're just going to move on. Uh, so for privacy, I'm not going to include the location services, but for the anonymous information, I'm okay with that. So I will allow that to be uh, presented to the Fedora project. And now we'll just move on. And I will enable third-party repositories. And I'm not going to connect any of my online accounts. And then we just give our username information. And there is an enterprise logon if you have an enterprise account. Set your password. And that's it. We're all done. We can start using Fedora. So it's just going to boot to the desktop. And I really like the look of the software. It is really nice. Uh, unfortunately, you will see a little bit later on, um, me, my Raspberry Pi 4 just isn't strong enough, and uh, it ended up locking up on me. So this is a GNOME 41, and we're looking at the different workspaces here under the activities. And like all of these Linux systems, they have Firefox installed, so quickly we'll look at what version is running. And it looks like it's version 95. So going back into the activities, I go to launch the applications. I launch the terminal. And we'll just take a look at what uh, architecture version is run on this. And it looks to be version 5.14 for a kernel. So since this is based on an RPM uh, system, the default package manager that is installed is DNF. So that is what we will do, is we will do a DNF uh, update and see what happens. Oh, it looks like uh, it has PyCharm installed as some software that's default in Fedora. And this is a 1.1 gig uh, update, so I'm not going to do that uh, in this demonstration. And you can see some of the software that it is going to update. Uh, it does have yum installed. 
which is a different type of package manager. So now we can see here, jumping into the applications, um, I tried to stack a couple of the applications to create a folder and that completely locked up Fedora. I am curious because I never have run Fedora before, but uh, off camera I will be doing some more testing of Fedora just for my own uh, purposes, but let's just move on. All right, I know this video is getting a bit long, so I will shortly finish up the video. I just wanted to touch briefly on a few of the OSs that we demonstrated today. My favorite, as I said, is Arch Linux for ARM, but that one is a little bit more advanced because you do have to configure everything uh, before you even get a desktop. If, however, you like the Arch uh, Linux system, uh, I can recommend Manjaro for Linux is a really great uh, way to get into Arch Linux and the install is pretty easy. Uh, the next OS that I would recommend is Pop OS. It's a really nice um, operating system. So this is where I am going to leave you guys. And if you've made it this far in the video, man, I really appreciate that. I hope you discovered something useful today. And I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Please let me know how I did, if there's any improvements to these types of videos that you'd like to see, or if you'd like me to go further into some of these OSs for the Raspberry Pi, just let me know. And I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.